You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name, and politics is our game, and we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we have as our guest Laura Washington, who, what can you say? She knows a lot of politics. She knows a lot of pol public policy. She, of course, is, um, she is a, a Chicago Sun-Times columnist. She is one of many over there. We have Carol Marine over there. We have Lynn Sweet over there. We have, who am I missing this, out? This is the, the Sun Times is the columnist paper. The, all the best columnists in town are there. It's a cool page. So if, is it every Tuesday or what? Uh, Monday. Every, every Monday. Monday. My, my Sorry, column. got yes. it wrong. Every Monday. And so we're taping the show on Sunday, November 27th. And so for some of you, if we get it up really quick online, when you go to youtube.com slash public affairs TV, you can watch it even before it airs out in the suburbs or in Chicago or in Rockford and Aurora. And so if you see this, rush to get your Sun-Times tomorrow, Monday, because that will be Monday, November 28th, and you could read Laura Washington, and your column probably is in the can already, it's, right? Oh, it's in the can. It's, it'll be online by 8 o'clock this evening. Tonight, Sunday yeah, night? Yeah, right. So you can, you, can, you can look at it. A little tease. You get a tease, right. A little right. tease. What's, what, a sneak preview. A little tease. What's that column dealing with? I'm writing about uh, the Inglewood Four, which is a, a very sensational case involving four teenagers who were uh, convicted of murder back in the mid-90s, around 94, 95. They are now uh, subject to perhaps being released from prison, at least a couple of them, because new DNA results have come out. This is your proven. second column on this. Yes, There was one just right. about a month ago, Absolutely. less than a month ago. Okay. Absolutely, because the case, the case is continuing. Uh, their attorneys argue that they're innocent, even though they confess that the DNA evidence proves this. The Cook County State's Attorney's Office, uh, Anita Alvarez, says that she's not so sure. And there's actually going to be a hearing uh, she tomorrow morning about She opposes just this. releasing them at this she point. Had, well, they, they, well, wait a, a second. What's a, the status a, a judge, of this a, a Cook County Circuit Court judge has already vacated their convictions. He's already vacated. Yeah, so and he still, said he said these convictions no longer stand. It's time so for a new trial. So the question is whether a new trial and do they stay in jail while there's a uh, trial? They're, or they're, 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 all, they're all out now on, on bail. Two, were, were, all four of them are out. On right, bail. right, right. Okay, well, two so of them. One, one, one was already paroled, and I think another one had already been released earlier. They but they want, but many, they want to get their names back. Uh, Sixteen, seventeen years. Okay, so one was paroled, one was out on bail, and the two others were were still in prison. They're not on bail. Right, right, right. Okay, and so now the question is: Should there be a retrial? Absolutely. And Laura Washington, you would know. You poured through well, you these know, documents. The first, you're smarter yeah. than I am, which is <laughs> considerable smart. I don't you know, know about that, Jeff, but yeah. but so you're you the, you're the lawyer, so I mean, yeah. No, and I'm a recovering lawyer. Let's. Uh, I don't want to get myself as <laughs> practicing law. Don't send. If you've got a divorce matter, go somewhere else. I am a recovering lawyer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that. That's probably yeah. a good place to be. But the the judge ruled that the, the DNA it, DNA evidence was so compelling. Uh, that it proved beyond a reasonable doubt that there were some real questions about those convictions. The question that Anita Alvarez has is whether or not she wants to go through a whole other trial 17 years later based on very little evidence beyond the DNA, and the DNA points to another man. So the question is, I think, what, what to do in there this case. There must be something there because Anita Alvarez, you and I know, she would be a Democrat. She's, she's well, a card-carrying liberal, right? She's a very ethical, very careful uh, yeah, state's attorney. She is a card-carrying liberal. To, yeah, yeah, well, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. She's supposed to be above politics when she's deciding these cases. Well, and in I'm fact, supposed to be above politics fact, when I do the show, but, you know, sometimes. Fact, I think it's interesting because, you know, she's been criticized by many in the African-American community for being tough on black defendants. And these Tougher young than men, on Hispanic? Is that these, what they're saying? Well, Tougher that's the implication. Hispanic. People like... Uh, like uh, Alderman Howard Brookins, who of course ran against her for state's attorney, have been very critical of her. They've pushed to get someone to run against her in the, in the March primary. They, they haven't had a whole lot of luck with getting they a didn't. prominent person. They, but, yeah. but they Are believe they that she has or is it too late? There's a gentleman named Christopher Cooper, okay. who was an attorney who's playing running. But they haven't somebody prominent. Right, exactly. So, so she's walking a fine line politically because this is the kind of issue that could be used against well, her. What in do the you primary. think? Has she been too tough I on think blacks? I, no, I don't, I don't see any evidence. You don't see any racial bias? I don't see any racial bias at all. Okay, so you give, and I think she's being on careful. this case, having poured through all of this, mm -hmm. you've looked at his extensive files, right? Yeah. You've taken the time. Right. You've looked at the documents. The filings, the, all the court filings. And, and I've also. And if you were Anita Alvarez, would you go ahead and ask for a retrial? I, no. And that's what I say in my column. Okay. Uh, I think it's time to move So on. you don't really have to read the column. We've just said. <laughs> <laughs> no, read it anyway. You've got read to read it anyway. This, you got okay. to read the Sun Times every day. Every day, because if you don't, you fall you, behind in politics. You don't, and you don't know what's going on in the city. You know that's the difference between the Sun Times and the Tribune. If I do, if I can't put in a plug, the Sun, the Sun Times is the city's paper. It's got its Tribune you know, is much the suburbs closer paper, to the I, national I, paper I, I and all that. It's, well, it tries to be. It tries well, to you be should read paper. both. If you're going to be well Absolutely. educated and if you're going to be knowledgeable about public policy, this is true. Mm -hmm. You should read at a minimum the Chicago Sun Times the Chicago Tribune, and the Wall Street Journal. New York Times. And the New York well. Times. I, if you I, read those I, I four papers. I try to get papers, through all four of those. All four. And you read the Wall Street Journal. 
I try to get through it. I, I don't. I, I can't promise I read it every day. Because Barack I, Obama, going back to when you and I saw him up close and personal back when he was running for the Senate, U.S. Senate in mm -hmm. 2004, I would trail around. I was sort of Obama groupie, you know, with my <laughs> camera in hand and all that. There were a lot of those back then. Not a, not a supporter, <laughs> but a fair and balanced journalist. Yes. I wanted to see these things, and so I went to a lot of these forums. There were like 30 or 30, 40, I don't know how many forums there were in the Democratic primary, mm -hmm. which was the real election contest for all you youngsters out there. And one thing I noticed about Brock, during all these debates and things he'd be at and there'd be breaks and I'd wonder what he would do. You know what he would do during the breaks? What he was always doing during any break when there was time to do. So he didn't kib it so much as the other mm -hmm. candidates. You know what he did? Oh, what? He read the New York Times. Mm -hmm. He read that damn paper page, to, you know, cover to cover, mm -hmm. beginning to end. And you know what I never saw him reading in all that time? Mm -hmm. Wall, Wall Street Journal. Journal. Yeah. And you know that's, so that, that shows. So what, is that, so what does that tell you? He's a, he's a hopeless liberal? It tells me he could have been a transformative president mm -hmm. if, and seriously, if he had read the Wall Street Journal on a daily basis, if he had brought somebody into his campaign who was a true, legit, uh, knowledgeable person about conservative politics and mm -hmm. about conservative thought. Mm -hmm. Now, who, well, that, who that person could be who's in the media, who knows, I wouldn't say that person is a conservative because we know who that is, and yeah. that person's fair and balanced, right? <laughs> but seriously, somebody who knows yeah. about that, who reads the Wall Street Journal, who understands economics, who understands free market economics, yeah. he could have been a transformative president because he could have done many of the things he wanted to, and he, could have, he would have been popular now instead of where he is as of November 27, 2011, which mm -hmm. is not to change he's the subject. He's in trouble. He's the, he, he is he's in trouble. trouble. I don't think he's in deep trouble. And I think that well, would you I say would you bet on the man to win the election at this point? I think he's been. A, well, you know, give, if if world affairs stay where they are now, if we don't have another recession, if we don't have the, if Europe doesn't blow up in terms of the economy, I think he's got a pretty good shot at it. Well, how many ifs were there there? Pardon me? If Europe doesn't blow it up, yeah. if it doesn't blow up, if right. it doesn't, if, if things economy, stay where we are, we if the economy doesn't get any worse. Right. No, those are a lot of Those issues. are two things. What those else? What else? Is that I it? think those are the two major things. I think it's going to all be so all about So unemployment's about 9% nationally as we speak, mm -hmm. right? And you're telling me if unemployment stays around 9% nationally, Barack Obama can, gets real? I think if anybody can do it, he can. He's, well, he's I didn't ask you that. No, come on. No, that's a cop out. I didn't say I didn't anybody s could do it. Will he do it? I said he's got a good chance. He's got a very good chance. Like better than 50%? part of, yes. I'd give him 75. 75 percent chance yeah. of winning. Yeah, and you can even if talk Mid about this a year from now and, and see, even see if Mitt Romney is the opponent, you think he Mid still Romney has that 70? Mitt best Romney is toughest his, opponent. Yeah, right. And but Mitt Romney is looking shakier and shakier. I mean, he, there's he doesn't have a lot of uh, power behind his candidacy in terms of popularity. I mean, if you look at the polls, what is he? He's polling around 18, 19 percent in most in most of these polls. Right. That means 80 percent of the, the, the Republican base doesn't like him, and that has been well, not consistent quite. for not months. They're not quite as excited, and it's a stronger, in a sense, the Republican field is a more balanced in terms of not ideology, but in per terms of strength mm -hmm. than the Democratic field was when they had eight candidates and ran coincidentally enough in the Democratic primary when Barack was running. Because you had Obama, you mm -hmm. had you, you had Hillary. And you had Edwards, and then the rest were just, you know, they're for show. Joe and, Biden and was running for vice president. And you don't president. think that's true in this case with this Republican lineup? No. For show, you got uh, you got well, a Herman Cain, you, you got a Michelle Bachman, you so got a Ron they're not Paul, serious. you got a Rick Santorum. I don't, th I, don't I think so they the think only, they're serious. So I don't the, think that they have. I don't think they have the standing or the money or the organization to be a, to take be taken that seriously. So the only they're serious spoilers. candidates, in your view, would be one Mitt Romney. Yeah. Two, Rick Perry. On a good day. Three, New Newt Gingrich. Gingrich. New Green Gingrich has been surging. And then those three. After that, nobody else, in your view, has a shot of winning the Republican nomination yeah. for president and, of the United States. And, and, yes. And I would still, if I had to bet today, I still say it's going to be Romney. But I think Romney's going to be pretty beaten and bloodied. Leading, uh, it's, it's not going to be an easy primary season for him. Because Gingrich, Gingrich is doing, alone is going to bloody well. him up, and yeah. Perry's got money to bloody him Absolutely. up more so than Gingrich, and Absolutely. the rest will throw some shots. I mean, and these debates that we're watching are really quite informative. Right. Have you been right. watching oh, the Republican I've presidential every, I've debates? I've watched every debate. They've been fascinating. Which was the High best? High entertainment. Was the last one that came out of Washington, it, and we're, again we say the last one because that was on November 22nd as we take on the That was the one where, the where Gingrich took a step out on the immigration issue. Right. And, and the main thing that was different, it was in Washington, so mm -hmm. you had people pop up to ask questions and literally pop up who mm -hmm. were Washington dignitaries, sort of, mm -hmm. like Ed Meese at the Heritage Foundation like Paul Wolfowitz, I don't know where he is now. So sort of the, the Republican I, conservative icons, right? as opposed to Joe Schmo or Jeff Berkowitz stands up in the audience and say, here's a question from YouTube. 
You know, I isn't it time we got serious about journalism and had people who understand the issues ask the questions? Do we have to well, do this populist thing of having Joe oh, Schmutz stand up yeah, every time? Yeah, I think ask so. Questions? I yeah. think populist. You like Joe Schmutz? There's, there's called, we're called voters. Is. Voters are supposed to have some input and some and some That's participation. That's fine. You can write letters to the editor, but I don't know that they. They can't interrogate these guys. They can't ask, and women. They cannot ask follow-ups. They're not about, trained to do that. Is it about interrogation, it? or is it about, it is about responding to voters it, it, and to no, what no. their issues it is and about, their concerns are? It is about nailing these people down mm -hmm. so we know what they're going to do. None mm -hmm. of this stuff about you know what politicians love to say. Well, I'll look at that. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of whether you'll look at it, as Eric Soren says. It's whether you'll do it. Mm -hmm. They want to know that. And the only people who really are trained to do that they don't all do it, and you that, and that's you know that, Laura, mm -hmm. well, because you you have a, you have training from the Medill School, bachelor's degree. You have a graduate degree from Medill mm -hmm. School. You've taught at Medill, right. so you know what goes on in terms of training journalists. And you know right. sometimes the output isn't what the input is, right? Absolutely. But if but you I, train them right, is the most important thing to train a journalist how to know the issues, aggressively examine on the issues, and do follow-ups. I think that's would be a very good description. You've got to know how to do good reporting, but you also have to understand. What you're doing right. when, when I teach. So you should know. You should know. The first economics. thing you do is you, you should, should know economics. Well, you right? shouldn't walk out the door and ask anybody a question unless you've studied the issue and, and done as much reading. But if you don't know economics, you can. can you well, really be a good journalist? Well, you don't know economics overnight. No, where do they, don't learn it how overnight. many courses in economics are people in the Medill School of Journalism I required to know, take? I'm not that close to the curriculum anymore, but I, I would know the answer. It. Zero. Yeah. Zero. There might be some business reporting. How many courses in law are they required courses. to take? There's, there's no, a law. I don't want there's business a, reporting. I want people law, to know what a demand curve is and a supply curve is. Do you know what I mean? There's a law in journalism course, I believe, that Medill teaches, which I think is, I mean, journalists has particularly have to know the law as it relates to their own reporting. It would be helpful, libel, slander, would be helpful if thing. journalists understood the law in the sense that, you know, in a sense, it, like, like doing a TV show. And if you do a few hundred shows and you screw up like at 100 or 200, you're going to get the message after yeah. a while, right? Same thing about practicing law. So it's not just getting a law degree. It's not taking going to law school. Mm -hmm. It's going before a judge and getting beat up time and time again. Mm -hmm. And that happens five or ten years. You've kind of got it. And then you can ask questions from a mature, thoughtful perspective about the law. Just one thing. For instance, for instance, well, you're supposed to be here. It says here somebody got, you specialize in African-American affairs, right? Right. That's a special kind of a... Well, it's a very it's And that's a very not something special. I was taught in school. That was something I learned over over the years as a reporter. I, I covered the African American community extensively for many years and still do. And so when I say I specialize, it's just I've learned a lot about it by race by and being racism. On the you and specialize in race and racism. Not in doing it, but in understanding it and mm -hmm. understanding those issues. Yeah. Right? I'm not overstating it. No. Well that's what you that's, specialize that's in my, social that's, justice, that's, right? That's my bio. Yeah. These are your this is your calling card, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And you do TV. You are the a you are an ABC Seven political analyst, right? Correct. So you combine journalism in the print area, you combine it in the TV area, and you combine it in terms of your background and experience. Yeah. You would say you are. Well, you, know, you are an African American, right? There's there's a lot of talk about multiple platforms now in the business, and that's and this is something you know you're, you're doing TV, you're doing print, you're doing uh, radio, you're doing internet. I was doing that kind of work All the time. long before even you understood even talked about platforms. And, you know, and I just I, I combined but a lot of, people a lot do of that. skills. Carol Marine does that, right? Absolutely. She's on t she's on eleven. She's on five. She's, she's a colleague of yours sometimes. and sometimes. Right. Okay. Right. Lynn Sweet does that, maybe not as right. much. She does her column more. She does her blog more. In this, she in this, often is on Channel 11 on public TV. In this world, you have to be multi. You, it's, it's called multitasking. Right. Is what it's called, because people are getting their news and information from so many different places. You want to make so sure if you you're in all those places. If you specialize in African American affairs mm -hmm. and race and racism, mm -hmm. and you have an understanding from what you've studied, what you've people have interviewed, worked in the area, and uh, so tell me. Was Herman Cain, was he the subject of a high-tech lynching? Oh, my God. I think it was a big mistake for him to use that term. It, because of that, what that implies. Well, who else, who else used that term? It, well, our our uh, Supreme Court Justice. Clarence Thomas. That's right. So is it the case that every 20 years or so, the mainstream media feels compelled to engage in a high-tech high tech lynching? <laughs> well, that's, because it no, was 1991. Was it coincidental that I don't, I don't almost 20 years to a day later, there was a high tech, or the contention is by right. some, there was a high tech lynching, right. similar to similar to Clarence Thomas. This time, Herman Cain, which is not to say that Herman Cain doesn't have other problems, yeah. which is not to say that Herman Cain did or did not engage in any sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. But a person with modicum of understanding of the law, mm -hmm. which I would hope we have in the media, somebody, mm 
mm -hmm. would point out, you know, we have a thing called the statute of limitations. And we have it there for a reason. So think of the number of people who are in the mainstream media who have gone to law school. Who have so practiced law. So and I didn't hear, I didn't hear one person say that. I mean, it, am I the only curse? So your point Were they all gone that day in law school? They missed that day in law school? These activities happened, whatever happened in terms of the activities that have been alleged that happened around sexual harassment, we, we're, your point is that we're past the statute of limitations as far as that's concerned? Uh, well, no, my point is there is a meaning, and I would expect some person yeah. somebody in the law and who is now in the mainstream media to point out and say the reason we have in the law mm -hmm. okay it's not enough to know just see this is a different seems it's somewhat it's somewhat oh highbrow me no that's the wrong words it's somewhat you know this feeling I have if you go to the University of Chicago Law School you get different things out of that than if you go to John Marshall mm -hmm. I've got in trouble on the set for saying but it's true you know because there are certain things that you get out of John Marshall you're more likely to be a judge in the circuit court of Cook County if you went to John well, Marshall than if you went to the University of Chicago Law School. That's a political uh, relationship. Well, one thing I think you get out of, you know the statute of limitations if you go to Marshall mm -hmm. or Loyola. So, so but, but I don't, but I don't no, understand, okay, I don't the point understand is, what your point is. My point is, my point is, if you went to the University of Chicago Law School, you understand the reason why we have the statute of limitations mm -hmm. is because it allows us to do justice more frequently than if we didn't. Mm -hmm do justice because when we have trials they're going to be with witnesses who have good memories mm -hmm. who are fresh who are not trying to say what did I what was I thinking 15 years ago mm -hmm. more like if a statute of limitations is four years it's what was I thinking within four years mm -hmm. okay there are exceptions concealment and all that but that's the takeaway from going to law school that doesn't mean that you can't discuss so, this. So that doesn't mean you have to apply all the same standards. I still don't understand. I just, why I just is it, what, what, okay, the reporters on the air reporting on the Herman Cain case. What is the context in which he, he or she brings up the statute the, of limitations the, the, argument? The context is, is that somebody stands up there and says to Gloria Allred, uh -huh. who is representing sure. one of these young ladies right. or elderly ladies, well, Gloria, you're a lawyer. You understand there's a statute of limitations in the law. And is it true that we have that, Gloria, because if we, if we examine witnesses when their memories are fresh, we're more likely to get truth, okay? Mm -hmm. If we allow cross-examination, Gloria, of the witness, not of you, Gloria, mm -hmm. but I want to see your witness. Is, he coming up bef is she coming up here mm -hmm. to Brian Williams and say, ask me any questions you want? Mm -hmm. No, she's not, because you know what? I'm Gloria Gallred, and I'll answer all the questions. Mm -hmm. So in what sense is this guy getting justice? Because... And all these, initially, they didn't even say who they were. Mm -hmm. So Herman Keynes has got to defend himself against people who stand up anonymously and say, yeah. this guy did this sometime, some way. Not, not all of them, some of them came out. And don't no, but a, a number of them were. And I just wonder where the mainstream media, who are so respectful, okay? Mm -hmm. And this isn't a case of rape where you have to respect the person's privacy. Mm -hmm. It's a person who's 15 years ago filed a, a complaint, maybe. Mm -hmm. But now that person would like to anonymously raise issues, go beyond it, and not answer questions. Is that any way well, to run I a railroad? That, is that I any way to run a railroad? I think there are two women that were not anonymous who have come forward, who have been on camera, who or, or at least talked to the media about this. I think. And we, at least two. I and think so that means viewers have that to means we should t knock this and guy I, out as a presidential candidate. No, I don't think any. I don't well, think, I don't think he's what been about Bill Clinton? Out. I mean, I he had a bimbo eruption every absolutely, other day. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and where was and the mainstream media then? They loved this guy. They loved they him, and they can't it. get enough of him, and they, they still can't. They reported it. The Monica Lewinsky thing was very well, very thoroughly, uh, exhaustively reported, and people yeah, didn't yeah, care. I don't you know. know, that's what voters do decide. Do you think? Do you think we don't decide? The voters. Decide. Can the mainstream media tolerate a black conservative? Oh, I think that... I mean, think about it. With, with, with Clarence Thomas, with Herman Cain, what did these two gentlemen have in common? They were black conservatives. Yeah. Well, I don't think they had anything to do with, their, with, with the controversies that surrounded yeah. them. You okay. know, I, Walter I, Williams. I do think, you, know, you know the I name Walter Williams? More, I think is he a black conservative? Yes. Is, is, is Tom yes, Sewell a black conservative? Yes. Do you think they, they get think as they get much... Of, do you think they get as much play as the... I won't name them, but a variety of black liberals who are columnists... Mm -hmm. who are getting Pulitzer people Prizes. People like Cornel West. Co like yeah, that, or yeah. people like that, or Eugene Robinson, and on and on. And Ooh, like man. Reverend Al. Reverend Al now has his own show. You've written about this on MSNBC. Mm -hmm. Right. Not, Reverend not Al. a great show. Reverend Al, of course not. He's, there's he, well, there's no way job. in the world that man should have his own show. Yeah. Not because he's black, not because he's white, not because he may have burned down buildings in the past. 
There are a variety of things. Yeah, burn he doesn't buildings. have he doesn't have the faintest idea and care about how to do a quality show yeah. that is balanced journalism and that and that actually makes money for the station. I don't think the MSNBC is interested. He's in got that show because he MS kissed up to Barack Obama and Barack Obama wants people to kiss up and and, and the people who run that station want to kiss up to Barack. I would, and you I know all of that's going that. on. I would right? disagree with that. MSNBC is is the equivalent it's, of Fox. It's an embarrassment. No, it's, it is worse. It is worse oh, okay. than it is worse than Fox. <laughs> okay, name this. All right. I can name you one show that's a serious one-hour news show that has balanced discussion uh, and analysis, I was you and also talking reporting. About yours, but obviously it's an hour, so it couldn't be yours. Yeah, well, <laughs> other than yours, <laughs> other than mine. Yeah, and you know what that show is, right? Uh, you're talking about Chicago tonight. I'm talking about Fox News Channel's oh. one-hour news show. Do you know the one-hour news show? Brett Bear has that. Brett Hume. Yeah, I've seen it. Used to have it. Mm -hmm. a sort of semi-former colleague of yours, because he was at Seven mm -hmm. for a long time mm -hmm. nationally. Okay. You've seen that show? Mm -hmm. Is it a one-hour news show? Yes. Is there balance in the, in the, in the discussion when Mara Eliasson comes on, when William Williams come on, and they have a panel yeah, discussion? But that's, for not all, that's not all that airs on Fox. No, and, and, no, and, no, no I'm to forget that. I'm just okay. saying, which network, cable network, can stand up and say, we have a one-hour, serious, tough, challenging news show mm -hmm. with balanced discussion, assessment, as well as reporting. I think CNN does a good, pretty good job of it. Name, name the show of the one hour oh, news show. Yeah. Well, I, I like Erin uh, Burnett's new show. Have you seen that one? That's a, she does a few a things CNBC. right, but she's not a serious journalist in the same sense that the fix who are on Fox are. She's not a Charles Krauthammer, okay? Mm -hmm. She's well, not a Brit Hume. A Brit Hume was, she's, Brit she's, Hume was there for like 30 years, years in journalism. Yeah, well, that's yeah. the point. Who gets their own show because they're 35 and attractive? And who gets their own show because they're Brit Hume and they did serious so journalism for to, 30 years? So you have to wait to be an old white guy and, and, and be at least 55 or 60 before you get taken seriously as a journalist? Is that what you're telling me? I, I, I think it would be good if Erin had a little bit more background. Now, I'll mm -hmm. give her this. A few days ago, she was questioning somebody, I forget who, mm -hmm. and she pointed out with Democrats talking about this 2%, these tax cuts, and how terrible they are and how the nation can't afford them. Erin mm -hmm. Burnett, and I'll give her this, okay. And she's the only person who I knew, somewhat on the left, or at least left of center, not on the right, who asked this. And she said to the person, I forget it was, well, you talk about the $700 million, $700 billion that they took 2% costs in terms of tax cuts. That, mm -hmm. What about the $3 trillion that the 98% get in terms of tax cuts from Bush? Mm -hmm. That's a serious question. Mm -hmm. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So look, this is not a tirade against well, Sarah. She's, she's a uh, she's, she's a and, smart, and she, thoughtful person. And I think that, that and shows. she's young. She just doesn't. She's not there. Where if she were not as attractive as she is, no way. Do you want to talk about sex sexism? No way. She would have that show. And okay? there's, there's, no, there's not look, a man. Fox on is a visual. There's not movie. a man on TV that's not there because okay, of because off. they're good looking. You know. That, it, that okay. Goes so you interview ways. no 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 high tick lynching of Kane. That's not really going on. It's just a matter. He doesn't have the depth, so he's not going to be a serious national mm -hmm. candidate. And I don't think he was going to be serious before the so-called high-tech lynching happened. He, he, you know, he was he was a celebrity politician. And I think at least half of the, of the Republican lineup falls into that category. Did the did ha have the African Americans outgrown the Democratic Party? Would that be a fair question to mm -hmm. ask. I, they may have, but they, but 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 they don't know it yet. <laughs> they don't yeah, know it, yeah, yeah. Right. and and but they should know. I think it. you know. There, I think there's a lot of disappointment in, in, among African Americans, for example, of of, of, of Barack Obama's performance. Today. But, but those are the people who think he should have been more liberal. In well, large, in large think, part, I, mean, I, I know these people. They're liberal. Know, I'm, I'm a bigger defender of Barack of, Obama than these people are. I don't, I don't think they I don't think so much in terms of liberal or. or I don't know liberal. They want to see more government spending. They want to see more. They yeah, some of these people would like to see a jobs. They, they, they want. They want jobs. This is, you know, what a concept, and, well, and they don't feel that they're getting. But here's any, a little bit of economics, Laura. How are jobs created in the United States, and indeed in most other places? Through through creating wealth. Through that's good. Creating wealth, right? Yeah. And. Does the government create wealth, or does private industry create wealth? I think uh, the government contributes to creating wealth by providing jobs. I mean, for example, the African American community providing jobs. So when the African government American hires people, they're creating jobs. Would not be as stable and vital as it is without uh, the without government, because many of those people or government workers. There's a solid we've black created, middle class in Chicago. We've created a dependency on, well, on well, the well, government. government, this government is the has a place and government, uh, I mean, you, the CTA, the trains don't run on time unless government runs them. City Hall, uh, government services, sweeping the streets, picking up the garbage, somebody's got to do that. What's that's, the biggest problem? That's the role of government workers that provide those services. What, what is or, the or biggest the problem government. facing the African American community? Unemployment, I would say, right? Yeah. Unemployment and education. Yeah. 
I'm surprised. What do you think the biggest problem? I just if you had to go to number two, what I would just, be the second education. most important? And education. education. Right. And education is ahead because if you solve the education problem, you solve the job problem. Mm -hmm. If you solve the job problem in the sense of you give somebody a job, mm. it's a temporary transitory, so, you know, that solves their current well, situation. You know, I, you don't but until, they the can, job, until they, that they, person they, can become self-reliant, until that person can raise his or her marginal productivity so that person can go in the market and compete, mm -hmm. they're always going to be dependent on somebody in the government to help them. Sure. That's not a good feeling. Well, people that work for corporations are in, in, the, in the same boat. No, because they can go to another corporation if they're well, really good. Sure. If Microsoft doesn't treat you well, we'll go to somebody else and go to somebody else if and you've got the skills. If you can't read, if you can't write, if you can't do math, you are dependent on them. And if you, have, if you can do those things, but just barely, if you've gone to the Chicago Public Schools mm -hmm. where, what is it, um, one out of every two kids drops out yeah. before they could graduate. Right. And of the people who do graduate, only six get a college degree within six years now, of that, and, and that is a terrible, and terrible performance. And what you're describing And that's is 20 years after reform. We're, we're after talking reform. 30, 40 years this has been going on, and this is happening in every no, community getting, in the country, not just in Chicago. We've had Republican administrations, we've had Democratic administrations over the last 30, not 40 Chicago, years. Not in Chicago, not Chicago. Yeah, but I'm talking, but this, no, is, this, is, a this democratic is not just a Chicago problem. problem. No, 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 Lord, this is a Democratic so, problem. You can't hang this one around the Republican back. This city has been run lock, stock, and barrel now for for the last 50 years, what and, is it? Been? A daily, know, a daily. Bear, it's not even Jeff the Democratic Bear's problem. It's a daily the problem. That are not run by Democrats that have the same problem. I mean, this, no, this not is large, not just the, the, largely this is not the, just the Democrats. largely the cities in the United States are currently run by Democrats. Whether you go to Detroit, whether you even go to New York, I don't count what's his name out there as being much of a Republican. Okay? Whether you go to Los Angeles, you've got an Hispanic. Whether you go to any city, and, and the and the an <coughs> and the answer Excuse is me. what? Privatized public schools, which is what. Charter school. Yeah. We, we do. lost the book. We lost the book. <laughs> All right. Uh, Charter school. Take my book. All right. Get that book. Herb Wahlberg uh, on school choice. Herb Wahlberg is a guy who, I don't know if he still does, but he worked over at the Heartland Institute. You know the Heartland Institute? Mm -hmm. These are people who believe in the free market. Mm -hmm. And they believe, in, they believe in helping people who are low income. And they believe in racial justice. Mm -hmm. There are people like Jack Ryan who taught at a house Franciscan before people in the journalism media, like the Chicago Tribune thought it was worth it to spend a million dollars to find out what was in this guy's divorce records. I mean, God forbid the, Shib without, without God that, forbid the Chicago Tribune should yeah. spend a million dollars finding out about Jack Ryan and what he thought about school choice, mm -hmm. what was going on at House Franciscan, and why they could graduate such a large percentage There's of low-income kids. There's been a tremendous amount of coverage of Health Franciscan and, and, yeah. other, and private schools and, uh, and charter schools. What's the charter school on the south side? That, uh, the, okay. the, the and how many boys kids, charter school that how many kids currently are in charter it? schools now in the city of Chicago? I don't know the numbers. 30,000. I'm sure you would say not enough. 30,000 out of 400,000. Right. If Growing I, every day. If I, if I said to somebody, look, I'm going to do something dramatic. My name is Ron Emanuel. And in two years, we're going to have 200,000 of those kids have the choice to go to the charter school of their choice. Mm -hmm. I think he should say school vouchers. I know he's adamantly opposed for reasons we understand. Every Democrat has to kiss up to the labor unions, especially not, the Chicago not teachers. Emanuel, union. Not Ron Emanuel. At the he end is. of the day, he is. At the end of the day, the day is no longer. He's, at the end of the day, the day is no longer than it was supposed to be this year, mm -hmm. maybe next year. At the end of the day, there aren't more kids in charter schools, not mm -hmm. significantly more. At the end of the day, black kids, Hispanic kids with low income parents, are not learning how to read, write, and do math in the city of Chicago. And that's the dirty little secret.